Where do we begin? Perhaps with the great luminosity of the sun. In its radiance, in its warmth, in its travel, we mark the day. This great engine in our solar system as it moved along the horizon intimately connected us to the sense of life and all its force. Our images were a celebration and all of this terrific force. All of these changed with cinema, with the construction of an image projected by an artificial incandescent light. Only in darkness could we see. The light of the world gave way to the light projected mechanically through the celluloid of steel image. Projected light has been now replaced with electronic information. Information is now part of the equation of energy and matter. This is the story of this, this transformation. This is the story of the disappearance of astrophysical luminosity as it becomes the pulse of electronic signal to vision. Our vision has been absorbed such that we can no longer see. We are blind. be able to describe the world, but we cannot explain it. a personal film, one that speaks to us about what it is to make an image. The image is both us and not us. The image is something we make to make ourselves, to see ourselves. And yet, the image disappears. Life is greater than the image. Life exceeds the capacity for the image to see us, to form us, to give shape. In this film, I make a very personal film. I make this film with my own money, with no actors, no producers. I like to think of it as a desktop movie, one 
made with small cameras, video, digital, watch camera, and re-photography of images. Here, I like to create a space of silence, space in which we reach for the image because I suggest the image is much our reading as there is any image. An image has no inherent meaning as perhaps the idea of a shared symbol. The image records and tells us something of how we see ourselves. I like and I'm saddened to think that the image is much about forgetting as it is remembering it is perhaps more a history of disappearance where is the place where things are remembered does a city have just a country a neighborhood, any hill, any mountain, any building, have for us the trace of something that has happened. How do we know the story of ourselves? What is it? that is told to us that has us form the image of ourselves that is how does one construct one's story by the things that they are told and in turn make a life or memory is a construction all of our sense of ourselves is in some sense is much made of truth and it is a kind of fiction in this film I let the image speak I am very much interested in the image as it moves, as it stops, and what is between the stops, and how it is the image is constructed in such a way that it speaks to each of us, not in particular particular to what it is, but to what we are and how we receive the image. I believe that the image is constructed by the spirit in constancy with an idea of love. How then to create the image that is a space, a space in the mind, in the spirit, in the soul, in the being of the mind, it allows for the resonance of what it is we feel towards our self being. Being such as we are for a moment knowing that we know 
that to what we know is moving past us, if you like, moving away from us, perhaps as much we are moving towards it, but in every sense we exceed the image, we are never to find rest in it, and so we are for a moment both in the presence of what is in eternal sense, a sense of timelessness, in yet what haunts us is the fact, is the knowledge that this feeling is that it is temporary. So all of us are in the process of disappearance. In the moving image, in the image of cinema, we follow the movement, the physical sequence of an action. This resembles life, it already has a certain coherence. This is quite different than the mobilization of the image by story. Story is one in which movement of the body in space serves the action of an idea of an action whereas cinema captures and records purely the physical world and its movement. So our story is perhaps a love story. It is a story of our place, our love, of this world. And of course, for each of us, it is different. Yet, how can this love be the same? How can we be different and the same? Night, we are all alone, alone with ourselves. What will happen to Sophie tonight, to Mohammed, to Claire, to Daniel? Alone, they sleep and wake each day, eager to make a world, eager to make their place. Each one with their own story. Each one a character in relation to others, to loved ones, to ones that don't 
like and or others who like them there with each breath go forward perhaps knowing or knowing what it is that may happen or what it is that they may believe each of them a character living exceeds stories what is this loneliness that so frightens us? Perhaps it is only in crisis, in need, that we reach for the other. And yet, this other is ourself. We are, of course, never and always alone. Never in the sense that we are contingent and possible. That is, we are being and becoming in and through the world in this sense each of us is each other each of us only become in being. So, never can we say that we are alone representation image is the world in which we live once the image gathers enough speed and momentum the image becomes invisible to us cinema is a machine to forget. It is a history of disappearance. Cinema records this speed, this movement, and like the earth that continually moves, when it would stop, we sense catastrophe. The still image haunts us. The still image is the antithesis of movement. And so, it suggests a certain finality. Stillness and motion. The horizon is a liminal point, a point of both finitude and an infinite. It both grounds us on this earth and suggests the cosmos in which we are in. It is the place of our disappearance while at the same time the stage of our presence. When it stops we are vanquished. We disappear. And yet beyond us it suggests that it is infinite. Infinite in its consumption of time. It suggests that time is all of a present. Already always happened.
It is like the cinema, a flickering of light. The sun, a projection of light that illuminates the image. With electronic light, we are in a very different consideration of time and the image. It is the collapse of the horizon and the plane of existence. It is perhaps where time disappears. This acceleration of movement has made the present more invisible to us. It is perhaps only the accident that allows us to see this movement for a moment. Rather than the projection of an image, video is a flickering without a horizon. It is the world perpetually moving but paradoxically in a single trajectory. This trajectory moves us away from the idea of circular time, of diurnal time, of a metabolism of being. It perhaps suggests this flatness, this flickering, a time without a cycle, either on or off. Movement creates the event, orchestrating a perpetual shift of appearances. This continual shift of appearances is a trick effect of reality, a mise en scène with changing sets, disguises. With the acceleration of these effects, there is no longer a here and there, only the confusion of near and far, present and future, real and unreal, a mix of history, story, and the hallucinatory utopia of communication technology. It is the illusion of things occurring in time. It is a paradox of appearance where the greatness of the universe is compressed in a perpetual shrinking effect. We can say then that the real has been accidented. This is the story of the disappearance of astrophysical luminosity as it becomes the pulse of electronic signal of total vision. Our vision has been absorbed such that we can no longer see. 
We are blind. Not only does the camera capture movement, it creates its own movement, bringing things closer, placing them further away. This arrangement of the scene is taken further in the arrangement of the world, which is always on camera. As such, the world becomes image, and the world is imaged and arranged for us. As the world is arranged, so are the people, constructed as a subject of image. The arrangement of image gives a construction of a world view. We no longer go to the world, but the world is brought to us through image. We now move to the organization of our sight. In mise en scène, we move along a relay of the gaze and the author arranging the gaze for us. We now see through others' eyes through a system of looks and exchanges. Cinema becomes an instrument of artifice. The camera is an instrument in the construction of suspense, mystery, melodrama. Afterwards, there is only memory feeling, affectation, recollection, tenderness, beauty, sorrow, fear, desire, love, longing. But cinema soon comes to make of the subject, a collective. Cinema is a mirror. Who is it that we see in this mirror? Cinema is an illusion. And yet, every illusion has its truth. Inside this illusion, then, is another truth. A truth about perception, time, and memory. Cinema, then, can no longer be read for what it records, but how it records. How is it then that cinema thinks? Cinema then in its internal relations is an image of thought. It is the sign of a way of thinking as well 
Satan is the energy, the substance of memory. Thought and memory in the duration of time. It is the time of thought, of memory, of thought in time. Having appeared, it is gone. And yet, the trace of all things that have appeared remain. In the past, that is a future in reverse. This seeming paradox of irreversible time is the thought of cinema. All things that happen is already the possibility of things to happen. And yet the past is no longer open as is the future. And yet the image of the past can be opened to be seen again. Cinema then as a construction of image in movement and time has been exceeded by the advance of technical instrumentation, the electric electronic transfer and ubiquity of image exceeds the closedness of cinema and makes perception as recorded image as an always on and constant instrumentation to which we see ourselves and our world. It is one in a sense in which we are in a continual process of montage, mise en scène, in which from the inter-indices of our bodies to the astrophysical dimensions of time, we are constantly augmented in our sense of technically engaging the world. It is in this sense that the narrativization of cinema, the succession of Episodic narrative and the linear notion of perception in time, video and further scientific instrumentations of recording and visualization placed us in an extensive field in which perception moves in very kinds of repetition and scales of visualization always on, always available, always in play. How then do we situate ourselves in a world of pervasive images and imaging. What responsibility do we have in making an image? Perhaps imaging for a moment gives us the illusory perception of a stability. 
this stability is the stability of time itself as if we were seeing time time more than the image itself is what we see time the duration in which we live cinema a motor an engine to see the world now impacts the world and replaces it until of course catastrophe each singular book now becomes one book each one electronically interconnected to the other each discrete text as spoken to by contemporary philosophy is the organization of a series of fragments of other books no work stands alone each book here isolated individual regimented to a certain logic is now vanquished each book a book of books is this a memory a story when does knowledge become lived and a living force when does knowledge become understanding when it becomes feeling when we are one with understanding that is when knowledge is felt when knowledge is in atly one invisible with the process of life and so this innate curiosity to understand to give ourselves a sense of being it is the struggle to tell the story of ourselves that is life's journey it is this understanding that the story is continually unfolding that we must be open with love in our hearts to willingly be empathetic understanding that each and every story is interwoven and not closed it is nature's secret it is the story it wishes to tell us can we see ourselves as a process of life unfinished unknowing without certainty this we give our hearts the space to be open to be vast and infinite as nature this then is knowledge that is felt knowledge always ready to be undone as we understand the computational nature of existence we can begin to see that sequence hybrid mutation a part of who we not knowing what catastrophe in the sense of com
complete change in our understanding of ourselves is part of this experience. And so, if we understand life as the last unfolding, we then ask of life something new, something in which we do not ask of it its answer, but its way. Everything in process, everything changing, and so we must change to open to re-engage and immerse ourselves in being. The goal of the direct time image and other forms of art is to awaken these powers in, in us. To become other, we need an image to wake the other in us as what yet remains unfolded. Mechanical reproduction and cinema made a double of the world, a simulacra. But to become other is not to become double of this externalized other, but rather to encounter the other in me.